Ah, today is your birthday. Yes. So. Woo! Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. That's why I've decided to give them a big birthday surprise. Ah. 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 <laughs> by, ah, ah. by bringing Honorable <laughs> Kofna Minta Akando into the studios. People have been saying we should bring him. Ah. Bring him into the studios. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. And now that you are on recess. But uh, good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see you. The indefatigable uh, sinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's wonderful to see you. Ah, it's good to see you too. It's been quite a while. Yes, the last yes. time I met you were on Alaji and Alaji. Yeah. 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 Since then, I've had the opportunity of uh, we have an opportunity of meeting, even though we talk. Yes. The terrible pressure and almost all the time you have one thing or the other doing. Even today, this morning. I had to cancel two meetings and from here we are at a, you see i mean what people don't know is that when we say we are on recess it doesn't mean we are not working you're still working sometimes it's even more tedious than we're also on recess yes more 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 tedious this mm -hmm. morning this morning for example we have a subset legislation committee meeting okay so we we'll have to sometimes we we'll close in the night but parliament will be on recess we have a meeting of the subsidiary yes, legislation committee today. Uh, it's three days to Christmas. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's the nature of our work. And sometimes it gets worse when you even get to the constituency. That's what the constituency yeah, do. There's no yeah, rest. Yeah, no, there, there's not. Yeah, no there's, so this work is 24 hours, and as a, that's why there's a need for you to check your health all the time. Constantly. I mean, continuously. You are almost all the time working. You are using every part of your body. You are using your brains, you are using your eyes, you are using energy. You, I mean, uh, it's a total um, involvement of the, of the total anatomy or the, body, the human body. Hmm. Uh, One of the things you've had to do is, you know how you shifted from where you were first to now the health sector. A lot of people listen to you sometimes. I remember somebody famously calling you Dr. Kobna Minta Akando. Yes, I said, yes, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, He's not Dr. Yes, Kobna Minta Akando. Yes, yes. He, he is not somebody who. He, don't do you have? You, you don't even have a qualification in health. No, not at all. Not at all. What What I do know is that I have a very little background in science. Okay. Yes, I I did science in the secondary school. Okay. So when I went to the university in the first year, I did physics, I did chemistry, and I did mathematics. Okay. In the so third year, so I did physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics up to I think um, the third year. Okay. So in the third year. I majored in uh, mathematics and statistics. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I did. So your major at the university is statistics and mathematics. And I did LLB. I mean, about two two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. You've not decided uh, to do my college. Well, the time. time. The time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm not that really a difficult. I'm, a, I'm a commercial farmer, <laughs> and I I do land preparation. I do harvesting for people, and I plant and process. And I have samples of um, of my rice in my car. Yeah. Oh, even once you are brand. moving about. Yes, I have a brand. Even once you are moving about, you are still doing. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing farming. I'm a, in fact, apart from politics, is the one major activity I do a lot. Okay. So I have a brand. I'll show you. I don't know whether we are on. We are. We are. We are on screen. Yeah. Oh, we are on screen. That's oh, on okay. screen. There. We are on screen okay. on okay. Facebook. We are on screen so, on TV. So, so, so I'm so. sure some of your constituents are watching you yeah, right so now. So I, ha I have. I have. I brought. I think I have. I have some in my car now. I'll show you how I package them. Okay. I plant and package. It's nice around. Nancy just came in to come and look. Oh, <laughs> she's oh, around. And disappointed girlfriend. <laughs> if she's around, probably she could go and take one of my rice from my car. And then okay, okay. Yeah. So we'll get, uh, get, get let, let Nancy let, let, so that we can see. Yes, yes. yes. So that's that, what I do basically. Yeah. So there's nothing like rice actually. No, oh, okay, okay. Then let, let's 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 then talk about because once you are here, everybody wants to find out. On the on the night when the fight was happening, where were you? <laughs> I have always been there, and I've always been part. Of, I've, I've always been very active part of the procedures in Parliament, and uh, that day I was there. I was, I was there. I was, I was, I was, I was physically present. And, uh, you know, these people. What we are doing in Parliament must tell the good people of Ghana something. Uh, and this is exactly what some of our people and some of the constituency couldn't do. Couldn't okay. match up to them. That is why we are where we are at the moment. Okay. And therefore, they should not just enjoy it, but they should learn from it. Mm. We should all learn. That is the only language they understand. 
le we, learn from what we are doing your approach to, to resist the oppressor's rule to to make sure you defend the, the the laws of this country to make sure the right thing is done you resist it because they have the penchant of resisting to um, on, on i mean they have a penchant of insisting to do the wrong things all the time okay all the time and that is who they are if it is not them it must not be anybody you see they they see the law okay they see the law what they think they think the law is not what the law ought to be mm. that's how they are so they are they cannot even be described as democrats what they patient. think the law is is what matters to them that, that is it what they ought to be is not their no, no, it, 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 it. and you see in the whole processes the law has always been on our side the truth has always been on our side and logic has always been on our side so if we are speaking we are putting up superior argument we are speaking the law mm -hmm. we are speaking the truth and you think that you want to insist on doing the wrong thing that should not happen Hmm. Because that should not happen. Because everybody has been surprised at how you easily march out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have always been beaten up to you. And you see, let me say this before I walk you through the processes. Okay. You know, whenever we are human beings as members of parliament on the minority side, do, but we have our own strategies. Sometimes the strategies are not meant to be communicated. Okay. As when our support base are worried about some of the strategies we take, we will employ them to be patient with us. We know we have, number one, we have Ghana at heart and mm. we have a country to govern, we have a country to protect, we have a country to develop. Okay. And therefore, we, we know what we are doing. It doesn't mean that it won't go wrong sometimes, okay. but we know what we are doing and so they, they must be patient with us. And we will continue to beat them to it all the time. Okay. If you are patient with us and you support us and you give us the courage and you pray for us, we will almost all the time beat them to it. Let me give you a typical example of this scenario. When we decided to be part of the estimates, there were this, there was this um, issue of, if you think you have rejected the budget, why then do you go back to do estimates? Yeah, it was a question that was asked on this platform. Very good. But the, the end has justified the means. Mm -hmm. Now we've gotten almost all that we want. We've succeeded in exposing them in the estimate. If we had not been part of the estimate, we wouldn't have known that they had spent 3.2 million Ghana, uh, Ghana cities on the uh, COVID conferences and meetings. Why would you have been able to detect this? Where? Okay. You know, so we always have a strategy. You know, at the point in time, they started doing propaganda that if we don't approve the appropriation bill, Mm -hmm. Ghanaian workers will not be paid. So they started hitting our heads together. Mm -hmm. So there had to be a strategy. Yes, appropriation go, but delaying the appropriation with the, the, the you delaying the appropriation bill with e levy. Okay. So that was a strategy. Okay. So almost all the time, we have our strategies in place to beat them to it all okay. the time. So you just have to be, I mean, patient with us and we will. I mean, arrive home safely in the interest of Mother Ghana. Hmm. And, and that's one thing that I hear a lot of you saying, that nowadays, it seems people are impatient. They, they want to see what you will do. They, they even want you to come and tell them, when we go to parliament, we'll do this, we'll pass here, we'll pass there, we'll pass there. That's not possible. That's not possible. For security reasons, for strategic purposes and all that, that's not possible. That's not possible. So this is just we, we understand we understand mm -hmm. them. We understand the emotions. We understand the love they have for the party, the love they have for the country. But um, sometimes there's the need for and a lot of them were pay. worried after the finance minister went to say that they will do whatever they can to bring you to their side. When your leader had already one thing, that will not support one thing, that. and uh, on a more on a lighter note, mm -hmm. nobody should think that any of us in parliament with the greatest deal of respect, is a fool. Because um, if Ken Oforiata mm -hmm. thinks that he said he's, he'll be able to give me something because he's a minister today, okay? Because he's a minister today, he thinks that he will give me money or he'll give me something to support him to do the wrong thing to continue to be in power. Why? 
can't I also be a minister like him? If my party is in power today, can't I also be a minister like Ken Oforiata? So why would I accept anything from Ken Oforiata to do the wrong thing for him to be in power, for me to continue to stay in opposition? Hmm. And every member of parliament, especially on the minority side, is a potential minister. Hmm. Every member of parliament. The first qualification to be a minister is to qualify as a member of parliament. Okay. And per our constitution, you must necessarily choose more than 50% of your ministers from parliament. Hmm. So why do you think that anybody, and the factors are clear on the grounds, that with the slightest effort, we are winning 2020 elections, 2024 Info, elections. Yeah. So why would I go to Ken Oforiata, not even because he wants to do the right thing, to go and take peanut, sometimes with the greatest degree of respect, our followers must also respect us a bit. Especially when Ken Oforiata has gone on screen to say that he knows how he will get us to approve, I mean, that e-bill, e-transaction, -e 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 e-transfer bill. I mean, so we'll continue, we have you at heart. As I sit here, if I am quite a candle today, that everybody knows the party has played a major role in my life. The good people of Jabosu have given me an opportunity. The, this country has invested in me. The least I can do for this country, the least I can do for my party, the least I can do for the good people of Jabosu is to give up my best. So, Osina, we know what we are doing. In Parliament and will continue to do the right thing. They, are, they have their backs tight against the wall because they won't listen to common sense, because they are arrogant. Because they are arrogant. If you have a certain chairman Sabosu as your majority leader, you continue to have problems till the end of this eighth parliament. Mark it on the wall. What is the issue with him? You know. I, w I can never sit here and say, I mean, um, um, he's not an ex experienced person or he doesn't know anything. That's the last thing I would say. Okay. But you see, Osei Chairman Sabosu could be a very fine minority leader, a very fine guy in opposition. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not somebody moving government business in parliament because he's arrogant. You see, if you are moving government business in parliament, you must almost all the time build what we call consensus. It's not about Takashi. It's not about Buga Buga. No. You build consensus. And he is not that type of person. He would like to insult. He, he would like to look down upon you. He doesn't build bridges. He doesn't build bridges. He would like to look down upon you. He would like to disrespect you. He would like to let you feel that you are irrelevant. He would like to let you feel like they have the powers and they can do whatever they like. This country belongs to all of us, not a single, not an individual. Hmm. Well, can you also understand? Because I was speaking to your former colleague, Alaji Musa Fuseni, uh, former member of parliament for Tamale Centre, and he's saying he feels that this. Um, I, I think uh, I, I said it here. Your general secretary also said the yeah. same thing. That there seems to be. Uh, the fact that they haven't transitioned properly from what the last parliament was to what this parliament is. That they feel that somehow they can still do what they did in the last you parliament. You know, I partly agree with that sentiment or with that thought. But I don't think that is what it is. Okay. Even in parliament, the purpose of parliamentary democracy, okay, is to build consensus. Okay. So even if they have 270 and we have five people, the purpose of parliamentary democracy is to build consensus. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't numbers. even matter the numbers. So if that spirit is not in you, it's not in you. So if it is not in you and you have huge numbers, it will not be seen. Okay. You understand? But if it is not in you and you have slim numbers, hang parliament, that is where people begin to see the true colors of, 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 of who you are, whether or not you are a Democrat. Because Democrats build consensus, especially parliamentary uh, democracy. You understand? But this kind of uh, the people we are dealing with, they always want to show power. 
especially when the president says that look how on earth will it be part of history that my budget has been rejected do no go and fight it that's the kind of president we have he he thinks he's a king so there are two sides of the coin you have a president who are, you are saying there's a president who wants to have his way yes and there's a minority leader who will not engage exactly so how will you have government business moving smoothly all the time it is because we in the minority always think about the good of the country so there are certain things we say look i mean it's not worth it let it pass let it go because there are people who feel sometimes it's like i said you're reaching out too much oh, exactly <laughs> we are being accused almost all the yeah. so that is why i get hurt when we hear opinion leaders in this country suggesting to us that we are obstructing government business really when our own people keep accusing us that we are reaching out to them too quickly and too easily do you remember when we approved their ministers for them yeah you were in this country we didn't hear anybody saying that we had uh, 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 cooperated with government when we are refusing to accept what the majority of the people are rejecting we are rather obstructing government business is not a government is not a president who is trying to be autocratic is not a president who wants to kill all of us but we on the part of the law we on the part of common sense are rather obstructing government business wow so for me we will continue to do our best and sinner let me okay. at this point walk you through i know that is the main reason why you have invited me here some of the processes and where we are at the moment okay. now the minister responsible for finance on behalf of the president submitted the budget statement and economic policy mm -hmm. to the good people of ghana through parliament mm -hmm. and this is what we do after the submission of the statement we debate the policies yeah so the budget is divided into two main parts we have the policies and the estimates. Okay. After the debate on the estimate, so, so, uh, uh, for, for for those of us, the estimates are the fine numbers. Yes, the figures. Okay. Yes. And the policy is the the policy the the the, the rationale behind what they want to do. For example, they want to do if they want to do um you you start okay it's a policy okay you understand the e levy is one of them exactly okay. so the policy underpinnings we debate them whether or not the policies are good so after the debate on the policies then the speaker would then refer the appropriate sectors to the appropriate committees then we go to the committee level and then sit on the issues mm -hmm. that is where the various um the various um, agencies will appear so for example I am the ranking member on the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health. Yeah. So when we go back to the committee level, agencies like the FDA will appear, Kolebu, Confanoche, all the agencies under the health sector, Ghana Health um, Service, they will all appear. So we will look at Ghana Ambulance Service, we will look at their estimates. So what we do is that we look at the performance of, for example, the 2021, mm -hmm. what they use the money for, and then we'll look at the projections that's the 2022 one then after that the committees will write a report then when they write a report they will, sub, they, will they will then submit the report to the plenary okay. and then we debate the report of the committee mm -hmm. so after debating the report of the committee a vote will be put for us to adopt the report of the committee and then mm -hmm. it means that that particular sector or agency or ministry ministry's budget will stand part of the appropriation mm -hmm. bill so when we had finished all the i mean the estimates that is when we approve the estimate and mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 appropriation okay. so the appropriation is what they're going to use to pay the wages and salaries and what have you mm -hmm. so in this case we did we passed the appropriation mm -hmm. so now back to this specific one when the budget was i mean presented we saw that there were a lot of shortcomings okay. for example when we had i mean heard that there was this disaster at uh, Keta, mm -hmm. and the minister responsible for Western Hassan had come to indicate that the president was going to do something in the budget, and it was absolutely silent on it. So we drew the government's attention and look, you can't do this when sometimes you have to give 
the country's money to other countries um, in experiencing disaster. So please do something about it. So it was one of the things we so agreed. So he, he came before you. The minister came before parliament yes, to, yes, to yes. make that pledge. Yes, he made that pledge. And then even in the media, when that issue happened and they yes. were calling him to grant, they were granting him interviews. So he said that. And then one of the issues was that they had misrepresented us on the ACA energy issue. Okay. So we asked them to correct it. And then the, um, the benchmark um, the values. values yeah. And then we also asked them to uh, reverse it. So prominent amongst them was the A levy. Okay. So right from the one, we had indicated that look, no way. We are not going to accept any A levy because it simply doesn't make sense. It doesn't one bit that I have my money that I am not working with, and you're going to tax that money. It okay. doesn't make sense. If my grandmother is in the village and he is sick, my grandmother is sick, she needs money, she needs money to go to hospital. If I have to send my grandmother money through Momo, government will tax me 1.75%, and the network will also tax me 1%. When it gets to that end, the final destination, mm -hmm. where my grandmother will have to go and draw down the money, to hospital, you are also going to government is going to tax my grandmother 1.75 percent of the total amount of money she is receiving. Okay, when in other jurisdictions they have packages for such people they call senior citizens, mm -hmm. they give them money, they give them stipends. We don't have such a policy, and when people are working to keep their their parents or grandparents alive, you are also going to tax those things. It doesn't make sense. When you, this government, has advocated for a cashless economy, mm -hmm. cashless economy. So, for example, when somebody is coming to, let's say, trade in Kumase from Jaboso, and he decides that, look, if I carry cash on me, mm -hmm. I can easily meet arm robbers. Okay. Okay, so let me put my money on my Momo wallet. That man says, hey, me too, I'm an arm robber, I'm here. So give me 1.5%. It doesn't make sense. So government, you believe government is playing the role of the arm robber now? Yes, the electronic arm robber. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, highway, electronic highway. This is the road highway and then electronic highway. So if you are there and you are taking people's money without doing anything for them, what have you done? You have robbed them. There's no difference. So it is government's responsibility to even encourage this cashless system. And again, one thing we have not spoken about is that, you know, we spend a lot, we spend a lot of money in printing even our cash, our money. Yeah. So if we 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 patronize the cashless system, mm -hmm. it will also save us some money. Okay. okay. It will save us some money. Mm -hmm. And so it is government's responsibility to look at all this. And the mathematics and the research in other countries have all proven that government taxing these electronic transactions hasn't yielded any fruit. Okay. We have made all the superior arguments giving them all the examples, telling them the common sense behind it, they wouldn't listen. So we indicated right from day one that, look, we are not, we're not going to be part. We didn't ambush anybody. We didn't ambush them. We're not going to be part of this E-Levy. And because they know that they had run down the economy, they insisted because they say that they have only two options. Okay. That is what they tell us. And I know it is a common secret out there that it is either they bring this, they are successful in implementing this E levy, or they'll go to IMF. Those are the two options for them. That is what they tell us. They have run this, this economy to that level. These so, are the so only two options that they present to you. Yes. That's what they tell us all the time. You meet them, look, if people don't help us to pass this E, 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 E transaction or E transfer bill, we are not going to have money to, I mean, rule this country. And, you know, this is how they have governed this country. And so we started going through the processes. We rejected the, the, the policy when it came to votes. They worked out, and that's the first time I heard in the history of Ghana that the government in power will present a budget to, to, to parliament and they will run away from their own budget. They will run away from their own budget. You know, they have always been using Takashi. You know the Takashi they used that day? The Takashi 
It's simple. As at that day, when we responded no to the policy, as far as the budget is concerned, and the speaker said the no's have it. Okay. Okay. What they should have done, and in fact, they even challenged the ruling of the speaker. You remember when Kenoforiata said he needed some time to come and then engage us? Yeah. And I'll tell you why it doesn't even make sense. On the floor of the house, you are, you are, you are praying that he wants to come and engage us. Then Mr. Speaker says that it is long overdue. At this point, I don't even have the power to say go and engage them. So let us all take the decision. So he put it to vote. When he put it to vote, who are you going to engage? It is we, the minority, you are coming yeah. to engage. And we said, no, we don't want to engage you. We voted no. That, look, we don't want to engage you. So assuming that you even win that voice, voice count on the floor of the house, what are you going to do? You have, you have had the mandate to come and engage me. If I say I won't engage you, will you beat me? No. I mean, does it make sense? So it's still the buga buga aspect because as at that time, they didn't have the number. They didn't have about four people. In Ghana, four, 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 because that day, if you recall, we were supposed to sit at ten. Yes, in fact, you were in the house at ten. Ten, so we were there, and so the greater crime of minister was not in this country. Mm -hmm. Kennedy uh, Japan was not in this country. There was one honourable member called Andre. He was in uh, Germany or so. Okay. My own sister, uh, Adwa Safu, mm -hmm. was nowhere to be found. So conspicuously missing were these people. So when we were waiting, it's when about four of the, and the, 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 the roads and highway minister too yes. was also not in this country. Oh. So when they were doing all these things, they were waiting for them to arrive. And when they landed, we had people at the airport and they wanted to them till they entered the chamber. And on that day, that particular day, Adwa Safo was still absent. So they knew that. When you challenge voice vote and you call for division, okay, and it ties, it means you have lost, have it. lost it. Yeah. And so we were 137, 137 because Adwa was on the end. Okay. The, the, our votes and proceedings is clear that on that day, Adwa Safo was absent. No. Okay. It's clear. I wish I could. I, I, I had brought this document to show you. It was clear. He was not there. So what they did was that they walked out. Mm -hmm. When they themselves had asked for a division, they walked out. Thinking that when they work, when they walk out, we will not have more than half of the mem the total members of parliament to transact business or to even take a decision. Okay, that was their thinking. Now our argument is that. There had been instances where one half or one side of parliament had walked out and still proceedings or business of the house had continued. And so if you say, I mean, quorum to transact business, for us, the only evidence to determine that number is our hazards or is a reg the register okay. for that day. Okay. So we went out. And you see, issues of quorum, Issues of quorum. If you check throughout, since the establishment of parliament, it is always raised by a member of parliament. Mm. Issues of quorum is always raised by a member of parliament. So when a member of parliament raises issues of quorum, then Mr. Speaker will then direct the bell mm -hmm. to be sounded for some minutes to allow people who are in their offices or at, at committee meetings to run into the chamber. Okay. Okay. So it isn't the speaker who determines whether or not there is a quorum. The speaker from cannot sit there and, and say, "Oh, uh, I think you are that not enough. You are not plenty." Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, yeah. I think that the, there is no quorum. So let me. No. It doesn't happen that way. And on that day, nobody raised any issue of quorum. So we took the decision. We rejected the policy of the budget. We rejected it. Now, Mr. Speaker travelled, and you claim that. You want to come and then reverse the decision. And you know, we had all their strategies. Number one, 
they, 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 they thought that when they come, they reject that decision. They will send a decision of rejecting the, 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 the budget. Then when it comes to voting, they will interchange the speakers, the two speakers. So when Osage uh, um, um, Jowai vote, then Jowai will then give the seat and then come and count himself to be part of the vote and then um, um, Asiyama will go and take the seat. That's the, the, that, that was their strategy. So when they got there, without any written motion, we were all monitoring it on our screens. Mm. We also, and people didn't also understand us. That, ah, so why didn't you also go? Because people felt if we were there, it would have yes. happened. But we also, you see, we all, the law is always on our side. We don't just do buga buga. Look, you must make sense and you must have the support of the law. The law says that if you don't have more than half, mm -hmm. you don't trust that business. Okay. We think that if we don't go at all and we don't register, our names will not be part of the register. So you cannot produce that, regi the, that register as evidence of having quorum. Okay. Do you understand it now? Yeah. Because if we had been there and worked out, they will also make that same argument we are making the first day that because you had come mm -hmm. and you had registered, you are present, you can't say you were absent. Do you, you understand it now? Yeah. So if we don't go at all, we will not be present. Our names will not be part of the register. Okay. So our argument will be more sound than their argument. Okay. That is why we didn't go. Mm -hmm. Now, they claim they had the numbers. When the speaker had counted himself as part of quorum, and per our rules, order 106, any member presiding, in fact, even if you're a member of parliament and you have been elected to preside, you can't count yourself as part of quorum, or you can't count, yes, and quorum is quorum. Mm -hmm. Whether it's for voting or for it's business. Quorum. It's just, okay. It's quorum. There's quorum for taking a decision, and there's quorum for starting business. They are all quorum, and except all that times, the numbers will change. Yes, and at all times, in considering quorum, you count members. Members! Of, not, not speakers. Okay. So any speaker whilst presiding cannot count himself as part of the quorum or you will not have the opportunity to vote. Okay. You see, and yesterday they were they were they were they were arguing that it is whilst presiding. So if you change, mm -hmm. you can you see it is not for nothing that the drafters of the standing order said whilst presiding. Because if they say that deputy speakers do not have casting or they cannot have voting rights mm -hmm. what it will mean is that if you are a deputy mean a deputy um, um a speaker okay and you are not presiding and you are sitting as ordinary member of parliament you cannot have votes yeah do you understand yeah so they should say was presiding mm -hmm. so you cannot go go and start a particular process and then you start to vote as part of the processes before you okay it's not done Okay. So that was why we didn't go that day. Mm -hmm. They claim they rescinded our our decision to reject the yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. The same standing order in the laws that you have quoted. That you ha you are you are you are you are grounded on that particular provision to reject our decision. We are also going to use same to re to re to reject your decision of rescinding our decision. Okay. Do you understand? The same thing, no, we didn't change our position. Also, okay, we are here. You said you have come to re I mean, rescind our decision, so we are also going to use the same law. And the Buga Buga started. Then, the, that motion was moved, seconded, debated. Instead of your wise to put it to vote, he says he has ruled that um, that motion cannot be taken. Okay. So, wow. When you had allowed debate on the same motion, no problem. We allowed that to go. We didn't disrupt proceedings. Listen carefully. We are reasonable. We are a group of reasonable people. We allowed that. I said, okay. We will come by notification. We will write to the speaker that we will still want to rescind the decision. So the minority that wrote to the speaker through a motion to rescind the decision. 
You know what happened? I have never heard it before. The same motion that was verbal, verbally accepted on the same day, and they, they, they rejected, they rescinded our decision. Now, the speaker says, no, I'm not going to accept that decision. I'm not going to allow that motion to be taken on the floor of the House. We saw the documentation, exactly. him declining yes. to admit the motion as... I want to, we allow that to pass. Nobody said we were starting government business. Hmm. Nobody said we were... Uh, nobody came to, 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 to our aid mm -hmm. to say that, look, what Joe Weiss was doing was illegal. Okay. Nobody said that. We, are, we, are, we also allowed that to go. Meanwhile, we were still participating in the estimate because we had plan A, plan B, and even plan C. We had steps, alternatives, strategies. So we allowed that to go. Whilst we were concentrating on the estimate to know the monies they had misquandered. Now, we finish the estimate. When we finished the estimate, we had to do the appropriation. We said, okay, now we are going to have a bill on the e-levy. So let's separate the e-levy from the appropriation. Appropriation will pass appropriation on consensus. Okay. Nobody voted no on consensus. So appropriation should go. So you passed the estimate? We passed the estimate and everything. Okay. Then the president went and stood at uh, 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 Kumasi and said, look, we are saying that uh, they don't have majority. They have the majority. And that he's thanking the majority the majority members of parliament for passing the appropriation. Whilst we had passed the appropriation on consensus, he was thanking them for passing the appropriation and that they are the majority in parliament and that is left with one. That he was speaking, I mean, he was speaking about the e levy and that they will know how to navigate. You should come to parliament and navigate and let's see. You should come to parliament and navigate. And so you heard the president. We heard it. Clearly. We were monitoring him. When, when they had nothing to say but to talk about. President Bahama, we had all from the beginning to the end of the uh, conference was His Excellency John Dramani Bahama. We had all. And so when he came to the floor of the house, we sent our people there, there's a finance committee, to go and sit on the uh, bill at the committee level. At the committee level, and people must get this straight. You know, on some committees, we are equal, mm -hmm. on others, they are more than us. For example, on the finance committee, they are 13 mm -hmm. and we are 12. Okay. On health committee, for example, we are 10 and they are 10. Okay. So, oh, so on your committee, we are there's a balance of numbers. Yes. Okay. We are equal. So on, 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 on finance committee, when you go and there are issues, the best you can do is call for a division. When you call for a division, the best you can have is your 12 intact. Okay. So it will tie 12, 12, excluding... The chairman, chairman of the okay, committee. Yeah. The chairman has a casting okay. vote. So when there is a tie. When there is a tie. Okay. His vote will split the tie. Exactly. Okay. And so the issue of why did you allow it even at the one of them, one of the majority members on the on the on the finance committee mischievously put something or tweeted something that they had agreed by majority uh, 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 decision that the E levy should be carried under emergency. Uh, a certificate but if you say majority 13 12 is majority yeah and in, indeed they voted 13 12. 13 12. okay so that was where it started mm -hmm. then after that it came to the floor of the house it came to the floor of the house so when we started we were even considering whether or not the certificate of urgency is even necessary okay. we debated that point and after the debate we were ruled out. Okay. In issues of bill, there's a, there's a procedural I mean, motion. Mm -hmm. So, at the beginning of the procedural motion, we rejected it. So, we voted no. When we voted no, the speaker sitting by then said the eyes had it. And we called for a division. So, what was simply to be done was to carry out the division. And at the time that this was made, we realized it was the second deputy speaker. The second deputy speaker that was sitting. who was sitting. Okay. And you see, I don't understand them. If I were Osei Chemesa Bonsu, knowing 
this parliament and I want to push something through. The best you should do is to have your 138 people intact. Okay. All the time. At that material time, at that material time, Adwa Safa was also not there. As at the time, we were calling for division on the procedural motion. Okay. Adwa Safa was conspicuous, conspicuously missing. Okay. And one of their members was also sitting as um, 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 the speaker, the second deputy speaker. So, no, you mean at the time you called for a division? Yes. Adwa Safa was not, was not there. As at that time, Adwa came later. Okay. He came on that day, he came later. Okay. So at the time we were calling for division, he was not in the chamber. That was why they were doing that buga buga thing. So I saw the body language of uh, the majority chief whip, several panicking all over him. Where stand there giving the the one sitting as a presiding as a speaker signals. So quickly I told my my colleagues that look this guy the de second deputy speaker will not take a decision on that. So he had to suspend the house. He suspended the house because they wanted to go and organize themselves and put pressure on Ajua to come early. Okay. So at that time, when we called for the division, they didn't have the numbers. Oh, so if they had attempted... They exactly, they would have thrown it away. Okay. Again. So they were, that was when they were using that buga buga. They didn't have the numbers at the time. Ajua was not there. One of them was also sitting. You see, and the principle behind challenging a voice vote is that you don't believe in the sound that was produced. You think that the no sound was higher than the eye sound. Sounds, okay. So it is a sound you are challenging. Okay. The sound. Okay. So what it means is that those who produced those sounds must be counted. Okay. So if you're a speaker and you are sitting and you didn't produce a sound, why do you count yourself? Mm. Uh -huh. So even the second deputy speaker was not supposed to have been part of the. No, at that time, you see, when you suspend, when you suspend, mm -hmm. and then you decide to change, okay, and then you are in the chamber mm -hmm. as a deputy speaker, mm -hmm. and you are not presiding over that particular matter, you can vote. Okay, you understand, and so we decided to call for a division. That division to never materialize because they didn't have the numbers mm -hmm. and those who were presiding were their members so and the speaker has the right to suspend certain at any given yeah. time you can't fault him so okay no problem now they organized themselves brought ajua in and then joe wise came to sit and then, so when he came to sit he thought he was wiser than all of us so he was coming to start some buga buga. Okay, today don't start that buga buga. It won't happen here. So where we have gotten to is that they, we, the, 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 the second deputy speaker had put a vote and we have challenged the vote. So let's do the division. So he started the procedure. He didn't even clear the lobby. That one too, we allowed it to go. So when he started the procedure, all we could realize was that, and before even that, he had indicated that if it comes to voting, he will vote and he will count himself as, I mean, he will have the voting right. And we said, no way. So we thought it was, uh, he was joking. And he, remember, when we challenged their decision to rescind our decision, they said that the speaker could count himself as part of quorum, but he will not have a voting right. Do you yes. remember? Yes. And there's video to that original event. vote, yeah. The same person said, I know today he is going to vote. All of a sudden, we saw the speaker getting up for Asiyama. When Asiyama had been counted. Yes, already. Already. Yeah. They said, no, this one, it won't happen. So that was where we decided that we're not going to witness this murdering of our constitution, this murdering of our standing orders to happen at the full glare of all of us. No way. And these days, for me, because you see, we didn't go to be part of parliament or the decision to rescind our decision to reject the for a purpose we thought that even if they do that we still have the opportunity to use the law and the procedures to reverse it okay now we were not given the opportunity to even use the laws to reject it should we sit down for the speaker to vote 
to be part of our precedent, and you will then will go back and use procedure to reverse it, and they will put impediments on your way. No way. So we decided not to sit down for that illegality to be committed by parliament. Okay. So that was where we, we, we decided to resist that attempt to murder our constitution and our standing orders. And then there was that kind of disorderliness. Mm -hmm. And so we had to suspend certain. And so the next day, um, the second, the first deputy speaker came back and they think that we had to adjourn Sydney day, probably for them to go and reorganize themselves and come back. So the substantive issue here is that we on the minority side of Ghana's parliament stand opposed to E-Levy any day, any time, any hour. Because now that you're on recess, <coughs> sorry, have they told you whether there will be any further engagements or they'll be speaking to you? Well, the only speaking we can hear is E. Levy has been taken out of parliament and it cannot be implemented. Finito. So you have only one condition on the table? The only language that we have been told, that we have been instructed by the people we are representing to do is that they don't want E. Levy. And that is why we stand by. The worst case scenario, mm -hmm. worst case scenario is that they will bring it back. Mr. Speaker will sit. That's right, Honorable Speaker Alban, Alban Babin will sit. If he sits and they are able to mobilize all their people, they will have 138. Okay. And we will have 137. We will vote against it anyway, and it will be recorded. But if that happens, it will still be carried. Mm. I hope you get the, the, yes. the explanation. Yes, no, I, do, I do understand. Very good. It will, it will. So in that case, the law will not be on our side. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it will carry. But we don't want this implementation of E-Levy to come on when we are part of that decision, like we have voted for that decision. Okay. So if I have seen pictures of the, the majority members on the finance committee circulating, and the good people of this country have gotten to know those who passed it at the committee level. So it will be part of history that their number, the 138 people, passed the E levy. They were going to explain to their constituents in their constituencies. We don't want to be part of it. Hmm. So that leaves little room for them to negotiate. Well, we don't want to be part of it. People calling me in from Jaboso are saying that uh, the hardship is too much and uh, they don't think that I should accept E levy. So I, I, if indeed I'm representing them and I'm representing their interests, I must listen to them. I, I had a colleague, uh, uh, Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohamed, here. And he, he, in fact, before this thing happened in Parliament, he said what, the, what happened in, uh, on December 7th, uh, on January 7th, actually. Let me yeah, repeat January. it any day. <laughs> that you, you, you are ready to repeat it any time you feel. <laughs> so you, you were not surprised because you had been told already. Yes, I had, so I had been happened, told. You were, you, you were not surprised at all. So, surprised? so it's something that you... Well, I'm saying that E-Levy, E-Levy, as far as we remain members of parliament in the eighth parliament, we will not support e -Levy. That's all I can say. You see, sometimes um, we don't have to divulge all our strategies going forward. Hmm. They did everything. Sometimes, at a point in time, they invited some of our members to Yoko. They did everything possible under the universe. Inviting yes, members yes, yes, of yes, parliament yes, 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 yes. to Yoko. For what? Huh? Only they, they are the only people. Who so we can tell them we are above intimidation. They, they, they have also sought to blame the speaker. Uh, they, they feel that the absence of the speaker actually didn't do, uh, they didn't do uh, good for their numbers. That's why they are, they are deputy speakers. When we gave them the two deputy speakers, they were excited. Were they not excited? They fought for it and we gave it to them. Why are they crying today?
Some of our own people were insulting us. They didn't understand. Why do you have to give them all? The two deputy speakers. Please be patient with us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you join us, we're having a conversation with Honorable Kobna Minta Kando, who is Member of Parliament for Jaboso. In fact, <laughs> one of the things we constantly speak to you on is health. Yes, 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 yes. And one of the things you have spoken about over and over again are the expenditures that have been made yeah. on this matter of COVID. Yeah. You were you were just talking about the, 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 the some of the numbers you yeah. saw at the committee level. Yeah. The one that shocked all of us was the conferences. Yeah. Which ones were they where where were they, where were they held? Do you have details of how this money is got to be spent? So at the committee level, when they presented their budget, a lot of issues happened. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I concentrated on was the COVID expenditure because I knew very well that that is where uh, they have been squandering a lot of money. You know, uh, COVID killing the good people of this country has come to create an avenue mm -hmm. for the government to loot the coffers of the state. Okay. And uh, I had a An avenue for looting? Yes, an avenue for looting. You cannot tell me. You look in, into my eyes and then tell me that 2021 alone, excluding 2019, excluding 2000 and, um, uh, 2020, that from January to September, you have bought, you have used 254 million Ghana cities to buy hand sanitizers. 200 or what? Don't be choked. Uh, no, but you're talking about January this Ge year. January this year to September. To the time when they were... No, to September. September. They didn't even have October, the budget November, figures, December. Yes, budget figures was up to September. They had used 253 million Ghana cities. New currency. Nine months. Nine months. 253 million Ghana cities. Hand sanitizers. For it is not looting. What is it? And this hand sanitizer. Where did it go? You buy your own hand sanitizer. I buy my own hand sanitizer. Everybody yeah. in this country, you buy. So, where did government even distribute this free hand sanitizer? Oh, they said they were doing free hand sanitizer distribution. Well, they said they had bought it. So, if government buys something and it's not, I mean, an internal generator fund, like you are selling to bring revenue, yeah. it means it's free of charge. Yeah, because. 253 million cities. 254 on, million on, Ghana cities. On hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. You know what they did? Nine months. You know what they did? When they brought the item, they have something they call IPC commodities. They had uh, PPEs. They had uh, meetings and conferences. They had medicine. Okay. Then I asked, what is the IPC, commod the IPC commodities? When I reviewed the IPC commodities, it was... 90% hand sanitizers. That could have been captured under PPEs, wrong or right. It, it should have gone They wanted yeah. to confuse you. So I took my time. It took me a lot of time. When I requested for document, they brought me cartons of documents. I took my they, took, they thought I was going to throw it away. And I had all at the proper time, I'll give you some of them. Then when I, re, re, I mean, went through, I realized that about 90% of what they could, they could have PC um, um, commodities was hand sanitizers, 250, 54 million Ghana cities. What they call PPEs? <clears throat> because when you hear PPEs, yeah. you think that, oh, gloves, overalls, and a lot of things. Well, when I reviewed the PPEs, so-called, I had 98% nose mask, and they had used about 107 million Ghana cities for nose mask. 107 million for nose mask for nose mask alone and those nose mask, when i when i went through i realized that most of them were the fabrics type so they will give you money if you are sinner and you belong to their party they will give you money and say that you have to produce those fabrics for uh oh okay uh, so so they were not buying the no no the no, disposable, no. The disposable, disposable are very readily few. available very few oh okay that's why they were Chopping the money. Uh, so when they give you Henry Ghana cities to produce two um, nose masks, you have produced nose masks anyway. Okay. So an amount of 100 million, in fact, 107 million Ghana cities was captured under nose mask. Wow. 
And majority of it was the ones that are sown yes, by yes, local... Yes, 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 yes. And then meetings and conferences in the spate of my mind. It's, it's not... It's not so these expenditures are not the ones dating back since, to the beginning yes, of COVID. Since, no, 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 no. This is from January to September. Conferences, I mean, when they were advocating that we shouldn't even do, I mean, meetings in a close and enclosed place. Yeah. They had done meetings and conferences that are two million. So we have called for a total probe into this matter. Thirty-two million CDs. Yes. On meetings and, and conferences. conferences yeah. Do you do you know how many meetings we are talking about? They they are we've asked for details. How many meetings? Where did you hold Who the those meetings? meetings and all that? They are here to bring them. So when you said we shouldn't have been part of the estimate, this would have been hidden. And for me, I'm a village boy, as you know me to be. I take pride in doing what I am, I am assigned to do very well. Okay. Okay. I care about my integrity. And therefore, I have consistently been telling them, they can steal in any other sector. But when it comes to the health sector, as far as my eyes can see, I will expose them. I will expose them. So you have to take it from me. You have this broad figures. Yeah. We debated it as part of our records on the floor of the house. We debated it and we have moved, we have filed a motion that has been admitted to probe, just like the Sputnik, into all these matters. So now we need a probe to be able to go into the fine details. This is the of tip of the iceberg. Have you seen the Because we have spent billions of Ghana cities on COVID. I we want to, I may be able to probe. Because you see, what, they, what, what we realized was that they were not spending the money in one sector. Okay. In the health ministry alone. They will take some to the foreign affairs. They will say they, they are doing what they call evacuation. They will tell some to other ministries. So we want to bring every expenditure of COVID under one umbrella and okay. probe it. Okay. That's what we want. So in order to be able to do a probe, you have to go through various ministries. Yes, bring everybody, whoever. So you ask questions. You bring your right to ministries to bring whatever they have expenditure on there. So, I mean, a motion has been admitted on that. And uh, I know when we come back, we'll continue from there. So the motion is to prove COVID expenditures in general. Yes, COVID expenditures in general. You see, the lies, and sometimes I ask myself, ah, how did we get here? You have a whole government that we have voted for. You know, let me tell you a bit about Agenda 111. They told the good people of this country that Agenda 111, they have awarded 101 district hospitals and that is going to be completed in the matter of eight months. When they appeared before us, what we saw was that, and especially when Kojo Opon Kroma said that, oh, we're not giving contractors any mobilization. Yeah. And so we'll give them money on certificate basis, where they get to the real certificate and we'll pay them. Yeah. So they didn't need any seed money to give to the contractors. Now what we realized was that they had given 30 contractors mobilization. Under Agenda 111. Agenda 111 that the president, I mean, broke the grounds just in September this year. Mm -hmm. Monies were paid as far back in 2020 in the name of Agenda 111. But 600 million Ghana cities, up to now, we are looking for where they, they put that money. The mob, so they, 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 have give, they have paid, the monies were paid to who? Yes. So that's, that's, what, that's another question. So in the 2021 media review budget, an amount of 600 million Ghana cities was captured as suspended in 2020. Now we don't know what they have used that money for. And they are telling us they didn't use it for mobilization. We have also discovered that they have given 30 contractors some mobilization. Where are those contractors? Are they on site? What is the progress on their on their site? Asam Reba. Asam Kesibi Reba, Frank and Sido. No, because even the agenda one one you're talking about was launched this year. This year. They broke down. So how could you have year? spent money into Yeah, so, so that's why I'm coming so check, to check online the media review budget, the last mm -hmm. table. 
you you see these figures there. So they couldn't. So we asked them, how much have you taken in the name of Agenda One? They couldn't answer. And listen to this, Agenda One One One. When we did our calculation at the committee level, we realized that government will need five billion Ghana cities this year in 2022. Mm -hmm. Five billion okay. to be able to carry out the exercise per their own calculations per what they told us. Because they a lot of the work numbers. has to... Uh, the numbers okay. they gave us and where they want to... So we took their own numbers, 5 billion. Then we, t we told them to pick the 2022 budget. And then they, they picked the 2022. How much had been allocated to Agenda 111? 518 mi million Ghana, not even 1 billion. 518? 18 million Ghana cities has been allocated to Agenda 111. Just like 10% of what they actually need. Yes. So, what are you telling me? We asked them, what procurement processes did you use? They couldn't answer. And they'll have to come back to answer all these things. I'm saying that as far as my eyes can see, and all these monies are COVID monies. The money is taken from... Yes, yes. Can you imagine that about 543 million Ghana cities of COVID money has been used to establish bank, capitalization of development bank, COVID money. 500 and what? 543 million Ghana cities. To capitalize a development bank. Development bank. When, I mean, uh, I don't uh, even uh, see the, that the relation between the fight against COVID and the capitalization of a bank. It's in the budget. How is that an expenditure? Yes. That... So, so as for the COVID, it's a means to create loot the coffers of this country. It's COVID that made them win this election, 2020 elections. COVID money. COVID money. So they are just spending, spending. And then when you say you need it, they'll just go and sit down and write anything act and, and present it, thinking that you not investigate. So if they are listening, all the documents we have requested and they have submitted, we will take them on face values. We will investigate. And they will be for their information. These documents they have submitted in cuttings to me, thinking that they just want to dump them on me. They are evidences when they appear before us. I've taken I'm saying it because I've taken delivery of them. And That's why I'm saying that we'll beat them to it all the time. And these documents they are given to It's in my possession. It's supposed to be proof of how you have spent the money. <laughs> so in those things, they, are they giving you details of yes, some of them the contracts them. that were awarded who do got contracts. Names of contractors are not in. So we'll get there. Um, I, I just want to be very cautious okay. here. So we'll get there. That is Take it one at a time. That is, that is one part. So you have a whole job to <laughs> do on COVID expenditures. <laughs> because we, we, the monies we've had are sometimes alarming. A billion dollars from the IMF. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We we'll spent not less than 20 billion Ghana cities on COVID. 20 billion Ghana billion. cities. Ideally, all of this should, majority of this should go under health. Yes. Uh, and we are hearing that what they are accounting for under health is not, not even up, up to, to one billion. It's not even up to one billion. So the rest of the money you have That's to find need in other probe. areas. Okay. That's why there's a need for a probe. As for this government, look, as I speak to you now, national health insurance, hmm? mm -hmm. the 2021 arrears is 1.7 billion Ghana cities. They have not paid. The arrears for 2021? 2020, 2020, 20, yes, 2020. Mm -hmm. The arrears for 2020, mm -hmm. we're in 2021. Yes. So the arrears for 2020 mm -hmm. is 1.7 billion. They've not paid. I think they said the national health insurance they are paying on time. The money due it. to be paid to the national health insurance authority from the Ministry of Finance, as at November this year, is 2.5 billion outstanding. They've not paid. 2.5 billion. billion. You see? If you buy anything at all, mm -hmm. they take the national health insurance levy from you. Yes. So government does that. And I think GRA does that on oh, behalf okay. of government. So the levies that have accrued. So the levies that have accrued then have to be sent to the national health insurance scheme within 30 days. Now they take the monies and they use the money to do any other thing. And then they struggle to refund the money to the national health insurance authority. That is where you hear that service providers are threatening to withdraw their services. So arrears that the National Health Insurance Scheme has to pay alone is one was 1.7 billion. In that is 2020 alone. They haven't paid. They anything. haven't paid. And the Ministry of Finance 
had yeah, accrued an it, amount of money, 2.5 you know, million. matter of oh, we don't have that money. That money has been deducted. It's by force. You, they will take it from you when you're buying yes. this. When you're buying water, they will take it. So it's taken. And per the National Health Insurance law, you must you must forward the money to National Health Insurance Authority. Upon getting it. Upon getting it. Where is the money? So what is due in 2021 alone is about 2.5. And the service providers are threatening to redraw their services we are in COVID pandemic. If they redraw their services in, in the era of COVID pandemic, we are going to quadruple our cases in COVID-19. Uh, uh, cases uh, COVID -19. So that's also another issue. Another, I'm saying that these people, these people, that is my sector alone. That's where I, that is what I've been mandated to do. That's my sector. I don't know about what happens in trade. I don't know about what happens. So they are just there. They are not doing anything. We have thousand and one abandoned projects. That is Excellency John Dramani Mahama started. The cheapest thing they could do is just to complete it. Some of them were as high as eighty-five percent complete. Go to Formina. That is where the second deputy speaker comes from. Eighty-five percent complete, and now some are deteriorated at a very fast rate. Been left at the mercy of the weather. If you go to Abetifi, for example, if you want to go and continue Abetifi project, you will have to demolish not less than eighty percent of the structures there. Demolish eighty percent. Yes, Abetifi, you can take your cameras there. No, we knew it has been abandoned. It's something. It, it is something that you've been talking about and not only abandoned, videos. deteriorating. Not only deteriorating, but at a very fast rate. You have to collapse 80% of what has mm -hmm. been done mm -hmm. and start from yeah. the ground. Causing financial loss to the state, isn't it? Somebody must answer questions. Mm. So, <laughs> the, 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 I don't know what they are doing in government. But in the, in the, in the interest of democracy, they are there. So clearly your job is cut out for you. <laughs> so I've told them, as for me, you know we the villagers, you know how we work. Yes. So as far as my eyes can see, I will do my best. And, and I've indicated to the minister responsible for finance um, for health on several occasions. That it, sometimes he gets very emotional. You realize uh, at the point that he said, um, sometimes even on the floor of the house, he will be addressing me directly. You will sit there and say what? You will sit there and say what? Now my name has been batted that I don't have to take it and all that. But I've indicated to him, he qualifies to be my father. He's older than my father. I respect him so much. I mean, he's been the chairman for the Public Account Committee and all that. He's been the deputy minister for finance and all that. Why not? I respect him. But hey, I have work to do. And I'm doing my work. It is nothing personal. I keep telling him all the time. It is not personal. No, 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 no. Not at all. Because I was coming to ask you what you make of the things he said. No, no. Because I realized question. during the debate he got... Oh, I mean, all the time. Anytime he gets on the floor of the house, he comes at me directly, personal, but I laugh over it. And then I said, well... Because somebody Everybody says, and how he or she, I mean, takes issues. So I, I, I think that I take them as part of the occupational hazards. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me... Because I, I was coming to read something to you because uh, one of, one of uh, okay, this is Samuel Ivan Sota. Senator, please ask Honorable, after the probe, what next? Ah, after I, all, I, I after all the done. health minister is still at post and nothing has done. happened to him. Because when he I sounded need, like as if what happened I was need, need this him being victimized, when actually what was being done was try to get accountability for the when people of go, Ghana and get somebody to answer for it. When you go behind the scene, mm -hmm. you will hear things like the man is not in charge, people are micromanaging him, things are done from the first half house, he doesn't know he doesn't know anything about it and all that. So if you put this together, you understand when they say he's being victimized and all that. You know, let me give you an example. When my own sister uh, Oh, this lady. He was Dr. Amanebo Amai's deputy. Uh, and deputy to Dr. Amanebo Amai. Amanebo in communication ministry. No, he, didn't, he, he, he never had a female, a female no, deputy. No, she was. She was. Oh, this lady, a very popular lady, who said that 
she wanted one million dollars. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She started before she was fired. That was that was in the early hours. Vicky Hammer. Vicky. Yeah. yeah. Once she even said this, a responsible president fired her. Once she even said this. Mm. So what any responsible president would do will be to fire this man. But the question that people have been asking, what happens after the probe? I am a ranking member. Mm -hmm. We pursued this to the floor of the House. Okay. We filed the motion, motion adopted. I took part in debating and seconding the motion. And I was selected or elected as part of the committee. And everybody, everybody saw what we did okay. on the committee. What I can do is to present mm -hmm. my report okay. to the floor of the house. Present, I mean, a report presented. If you Google right now, you can see me debating when I was debating on the floor of the house as far as this issue was concerned. That is the best I can do. Okay. So now it is the property of parliament. There are other things I'm starting to do, but that is not for the consumption of the public at us this time. Okay. But for now, the issues doesn't lie with me. It's the property of parliament. So parliament needs to act on it. So we have to vote on it, and then we take it from there again. Hmm. It's not easy. But Sina, um, Dr. Omane Buama, mm -hmm. my own brother, yeah. has always been saying that politics is complex. Indeed, politics is complex. Hmm. But, but do you understand... Because I realize that you're one of those who get people so emotional. Uh, I, I, I remember we had an episode even on Alaji and Alaji when one of our panelists who was coming from the MVP got. Do you understand why people react like to that to like it? Yeah, towards you. Well, you know, when I raise issues, I take my time to raise issues. And Sina, I started politics very, very early. At the age of 23 years, I was a deputy regional youth organizer for my party in the Western region. The then Western region that has been divided into two now. Twenty what? Twenty-three. You were deputy what? Regional youth organizer. Oh. Yes. I started politics at the age of twenty. Okay. At the age of twenty, I was at the constituency executive member. At the age of twenty-three, I was a deputy regional youth organizer. At the age of twenty-seven, I was a substantive regional youth organizer. At the age of thirty-three, thirty-two, thirty-three, I was a candidate for my party in my constituency. At the age of thirty-five, I was a deputy region uh, deputy minister responsible for um, lands and natural resources. Yeah. So I said that politics very, very early. But anything that comes out of me, I'm very careful about it. Okay. Unless I don't know, and I will not deliberately lie. So you can only get emotional. You don't have any superior argument to counter the issues I bring out. When I started this Sputnik issue, oh, they were, they were dismissing it. Wow. They were dismissing it. So I take my time. And bring issues and sometimes according to them my ways are piercing according to them okay. I ask them same questions that look why do you do this to me all the time say that well. but I continue to do my best hmm. there's a I, I think I've lost the message Lengi Chawinate who was saying that he believes the IMF will be good for them that actually you should have told them to the face that the IMF will help you because based on the things you are no, saying, they are at very, least they will have somebody with a very, stick on their back very, and they are very arrogant. And uh, there are a lot of people who are very humble, especially the president now. Mm -hmm. So once he has bastardized President Mahama for going to the IMF, he doesn't want to go to the IMF. Okay, you understand? Even if the country is collapsing, you would prefer to see Ghana collapse. Mm -hmm to going to the IMF. That is who he is. At this material time, look, any country in the state we find ourselves in, any country, any country in the world, you should be consulting and building consensus at all levels. Yeah. All levels. From branch level to national level, all levels. At the district level, building consensus with the MPP, NDC, because whether you like it or not, they are even there at the assemblies. Hmm. They are there. So how to get things move? 
Now, all of a sudden, as though we are under military regime, you are using the military to get your way to, even on the floor of the house, they were bringing military men. I heard it happened the last time. Yes, the last time we saw a lot of military presence in parliament just last two days ago. Yes, we really? did. Really? Yes. When they were approving DCEs, they were using all this Takashi and all. So, you should clearly see who is at the helm of our face. Hmm. But, we need strong people. Mm -hmm. We need very strong people to stand up to them. I would never advise that if the law is not on your side, if common sense is not on your side, don't go doing booga booga. Always make sure you have the law. Jaboso, for example, when they were doing the district, um, the district chief executive approval, the district chief the, the district was rejected on the first vote, mm -hmm. and they had to go and lock themselves in a room to do approval without the presence of more than half of the assembly members, mm -hmm. excluding them. Now we are in court. You see how it will take us. I mean, painful. You don't even know what to come out of court. So if you are there, should you wait till this thing happens before you run to court? But me, I'll tell my people who really want to see the NDC back to power that we should work. We should work. There's a although, lot of work to be yes, done. Yes, yes, yes. Although the factors are clear, but these people, uh, they don't mean well for this country. And so we should speak the language they understand to them. Mm. Don't leave your ballot box. Don't leave the ballot papers for the elections at your branch to be rigged before you run to court. Court will not help you. When we even wanted the electoral commission to account for the exercise he has supervised in the Supreme Court of the land, she was absorbed. So please, insist on the justice at the polling station. At the polling station, right at the polling station. When, it's come, when it comes to constituency level two, please, those of you who are there, insist on it that the right thing should be done. The right thing should be done. If you are a candidate, for example, for me, if you leave me, if you are a candidate and you don't know anything about the electoral process, you have no business to be a candidate for the party in 2024. You have no business. Every candidate of the party should be taken through a full rigorous exercise to know the electoral process more than even the electoral commission officer in the district. Mm. That is the only time you can insist on your right. If you don't know your right, how will you insist on it? You walk to the coalition center without a pink sheet. You walk to the coalition center without knowing your results. So you are going to listen to the, uh, the electoral commission to tell you your results. You have lost in advance. When I worked in the just ended elections, when I walked to the electoral commission, I had all my pink sheets in my hands and I knew my figures. I was only going to confirm and go through the right processes. That was all. That is when you go to the mill in the through the mill in the party. That is when you have been used to do all manner of work in the party. In the party, you start from the scratch. You know when to strike. You have the party at heart. When you don't even eat, and you know you are pursuing interests of, I mean, issues of national importance. Things that will inure to the benefit of the party, you are satisfied without even eating. That you get excited when they say you are doing well without taking bribes, without getting money. That's when you say you are really working for the party. Oh, I can't you are doing well. Oh, this thing you did. You are. That's our excitement. Hmm. 